Hello students. We will start with the 8th chapter in science that is static electricity. Now have you ever rubbed a glass rod against a silk cloth or a plastic ruler on your dry hair or a straw or a plastic which is rubbed against a woolen cloth even when you rub balloon on your hair. What type of force that you can see there is something which is occurred when you rub a glass rod or a plastic ruler on your hair so you can find that it becomes hot and there is some charge which is developed so what it is developed in that we will be studying about that in this chapter that is static electricity so whenever you rub a plastic ruler or a plastic pen against your hair and when you Take that plastic pen near the bits or tiny pieces of paper. You will see that those tiny pieces of paper, they go and stick to the plastic rod. So why they stick to the plastic rod? Have you ever thought why those tiny small small pieces are going and attaching to that plastic rod? So let's understand this. Why these go and attach to the plastic rod? Now to understand that, we will first have to understand what is electric charge. So all substances are made up of very tiny particles. You know that all substances are made up of very tiny particles. And electric charge is there. It is the property of these small tiny particles. Now through electric charge which is present, it is always in a hidden state. It is present in everything but it is always hidden it is not expressed now this happens because the positive charge and the negative charge on the object they both are balanced we know that positive and positive they repel but positive and negative they attract each other so this is as they are balanced so the object is said to be neutral when they are balanced it is said to be neutral and there is no net charge on the object if these charge are not balanced, that is when you start to rub it against your hair, when you start to rub the plastic rod against your hair, that means what is happening, you are not, uh, you are disturbing the balance which is there in those small, uh, in those uh, glass rod or in that plastic pen. So when you disturb the balance, the object is set to be charged and the number of positive and negative charges are equally uncharged for the neutral object. So when they get uh, unbalanced, the positive and negative charges which were earlier neutral, so they get uncharged. Now when two rods, when they carry the similar charge, for example, they carry the similar charge of negative and negative or of uh, positive and positive, when the charge is similar, so there is always a repulsion which takes place. Why repulsion is there? Because it will not try to attract itself. Agar same same rahega, to how it will attract? But when two rods which carries opposite type of charge, one is carrying negative charge and the other is carrying positive charge. So when they are carrying different charges, so it gets pulled towards each other and this is called as attraction. Now here in this picture, if you will see in the first diagram, if you will see the two rods are there. Now the ebonite rods are there and they are carrying the same charge. These, this is negative and this is also negative. So if you bring negative and negative together then there will be a repulsion. But here if you will see there is a negative charge and there is a positive charge. When you bring these two together so you can find this is also attract and this will also attract. So there will be attraction between the negative and the positive charge. So this is called as the attraction and the repulsion. Now this was identified by a scientist that is Benjamin Franklin and he named the electric charges as positive and negative charge. So positive we, uh, we represent as a positive sign and negative we represent as the negative sign. Now each atom it contains a stationary positive charge and a moving negative charge. So in the atoms there are a positive charge which do not move but negative charge it moves. So as positive and negative are balanced to each other, so an atom is called as the electrically neutral atom. Now when certain objects they are rubbed against each other, 
the negatively charged particle on one object go to the other object if for example you take two stones and you rub them towards each other one is having positive charge one is having negative charge so the object to which they uh, the for example the negative charged particles which was there on one object it goes to the other object so the object to which it go it becomes negatively charged जिसके पास जाएगा दैट बिकम्स नेगेटिवली चार्ज ड्यू टू एन एक्सेस ऑफ नेगेटिव चार्ज पार्टिकल्स एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम विच द नेगेटिव चार्ज पार्टिकल्स गोज अवे इट बिकम्स पॉजिटिवली चार्ज सो विच वॉज हैविंग नेगेटिव इट गोज टूवर्ड्स दी अदर एंड दी अदर गोज टूवर्ड्स दी नेक्स्ट वन सो दिस मीन्स दैट दैट फ्रॉम दी स्टार्टिंग द ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम विच द नेगेटिव चार्ज पार्टिकल्स गो अवे इट बिकम्स पॉजिटिव चार्ज because the deficiency of the negative charge particles jo negative tha wo to chala gaya so that is why it becomes deficient in negative charge and this means that the both the objects that is the two objects which are being rubbed towards each other one become positive charge and the other becomes negative charge here in the picture also you can see that when you rub those two object one is becoming positive and the other is becoming negative now next is the frictional electricity now what will be frictional electricity so the electric charge which is generated by friction we call it as frictional electricity and this charge is produced only at the place of friction for example you are taking a hair comb and you are rubbing it against your hair so there is a force of friction which takes place and the charges they get light up so this is called as the static electricity and when you will take that comb near the small tiny papers then the tiny papers come and attaches there so that means there is uh, some because of the friction the static electricity is developed it remains on the object for a short time that is a uh, when you will rub it at that time it will stay and after some time if you will again try to take that comb near those small papers then it will not stick because static electricity is only there for a very short time and the charges of the static electricity are absorbed in the air so that is why so if you will see this uh, you can perform it in dry weather especially in winter because at that time more amount of friction can be applied in winters and then the charge will also be there for more amount of time so now what you can do is in the next you can take few straw and keep them on a bottle and take an another straw and take near those straws nothing will happen now rub that straw against a woolen cloth and then take it near the other straws you will see that it starts to move so this is because the electrically charged object they get uh, they attract the uncharged object when you rub that straw against the woolen cloth it becomes electrically charged and the objects that is the straw which is there on that bottle they are not charged so the charged object they attracts the uncharged object and there is a repulsion between the electric charges there is attraction between unlike electric charges hence repulsion is used as a test for identifying an electrically charged object now we have to understand that how generation of electric charge takes place now how generation of electric charge takes place when the charge and object by contact when you touch an charged object which is not by an object which is not charged and when you charge an object by induction so first we have to do is we have to take a comb and we have to rub that comb on paper now try to bring another comb near that comb what you will see is that there is some attraction which is taking place because one is charged the other is not charged so the opposite ones they try to attract each other now next what you have to do is you have to take a comb and then you have to rub that comb on your hair or on the balloon and uh, you have to take that charged comb near the flowing water so what happens is as you take that comb near the flowing water so th as the negative charge are there in the comb they come near the flowing water and the flowing water which is there so uske jo negative charge wale particles rahenge wo piche chale jayenge and positive charge wale particles will come near that comb in the flowing water 
so you will observe that the comb has the negative charge and the water has the positive charge and due to this attraction between opposite and negative the flowing water jo hai wo comb ki taraf attract hoga the flowing water will attract to the comb and when the comb is taken away so the negative particles in the flowing water jo piche chale gaye the because of the charged comb so it again come back to its original position and the positive and the negative becomes equal in number and as a result fir baad mein agar wapas se you will try to bring the comb near it so there will be no attraction which will be there because then even the charges which are there that is also balanced so this is how the electric generation or you can say electric charge generation takes place now here in this diagram the phenomenon that is happening here is the static electricity so when certain objects are rub against each other they produced an electric charge on their surface at the surface of friction this is due to the electrons which remains for a short time and this is called as the static electricity and if you observe the picture b and c what difference you can find is that in b we observe that the attraction between the charged balloons and the uncharged aluminum ball is there and in the picture c we observe that the charge has become transferred to the aluminum ball and due to the same charges as after some time the charge gets transferred and because they both have the same charges now so there is a repulsion which is taking place so this is the effects of electric charges now gold leaf electroscope it is a simple device to detect the electric charge on object it consists of a copper rod which has a metal disc at the upper end you, at the top you can find there is the copper end and it has two gold leaves in it so the rod is placed in the bottle so that the disc is above the bottle so now what we have to do is we have to take in charged that is you have to take an uncharged object and an charged object near the bottle so when we take an uncharged object near the disc we see that the leaf remains closed but when we take a charged object near the disc both the leaves which are there they are charged by the same electric charge and they try to repel each other so when we touch the disc with our hand the leaves collapse because the charge in the leaf they goes into the earth throughout our body and the leaves gets discharged so this is called as the gold leaf electroscope now children have you ever thought that what actually happens when there is lightning in the sky and when lightning strikes the earth what happens why does the lightning strikes the earth so now let us understand what is lightning so uh, in the clouds that is where air and the clouds they rub against each other in the sky so jo upper part there are two parts which are formed so the upper part of the cloud the upper side it becomes positive and the lower side becomes negatively charged so on the top side there is positive and on the lower side that is on the bottom so here on the top side we have positive charge which is developed and here we have the negative charge which is developed now the cloud which is there that is on the base we have the negative charge and we we have the plain ground there so what happens is the negative charge on the bottom of the cloud it becomes too much there are too much charge which is there too much negative charge it is formed and on the ground there is less charge so it starts to flow down on the ground in little bit stages in some some form it starts to flow down and this happens very fast in much then less than a second and the heat the light and the sound energy is produced along with the electric current so the negative charge it try to fall down on the earth and along with the negative charge we even hear what we even hear the sound we even hear the light and heat is also being generated and this happens in such a fraction of seconds that we don't even come to know that it had lightning there was lightning which is there so what is lightning strike now so usually you must have seen that the lightning strike that is the charge which is there on the cloud the electrically charged clouds in the sky 
they are attracted towards the tall buildings or towards the tree so when lightning strikes an opposite electric charge is generated on the roof of the building or on the top of the tree because of induction and why it is produced because there is opposite charges one is negative one is positive because of the opposite charges the charge on the cloud it flows towards the building and this is called as lightning strike so now we all know that lightning causes lot of damage so to prevent the damage we have devices called as lightning conductor so the lightning conductor is a device which is used for protection from a lightning strike so now these device they are put up on the tall buildings and here is the tip or the end it is connected by a copper wire and here we have a pit that is dug and here the iron plate is there we have coal we have salt and sometimes the water is also added into it now this water it helps the spread of electric charge quickly into the ground and prevent the damage so whenever an electric charge cloud passes over the building the electric charge flowing towards the building are conducted into the ground through that copper wire so instead of the building getting damaged what happens is that copper wire it takes the, all those uh, charges and it then sends it to the ground and in this way the damage is prevented and when such a lightning conductor earthing is fixed on a tall you must have also heard that earthing is very much required in any building so earthings are fixed the surrounding area is also protected from lightning and you will you will uh, also see that in your building around you all also if you all stay on uh, on tall buildings then there must be a uh, wire which is connected on the top a device is put on the top which is usually for called as the lightning conductor so that the lightning do not strikes the building and do not damages the building so this is called as the lightning conductor 